is about to say because this is what he says next. He says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world? You can have it all, yet forfeit their soul. And if we believe that there's more to life than just this one, if eternity, which seems to have just slipped from our viewpoint, if we believe that there's something else, then what good is it to gain all that this world has to offer, yet forfeit the very thing that we believe to be most important? And Jesus is like, let me help you out. If that's not enough, let me help you out with this next one. So he continues, Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? I mean, is there anything that you, can, that you can give to exchange it? Can you pay for it? And if for some reason your soul was in peril, how much of your this world stuff would you be willing to trade to get your soul out of peril? I bet you it would be all. So I would be willing to trade it all to ransom my soul. And if that's true, then we answer the first and the second questions. Because it's no good to gain the whole world and forfeit my soul. Because I would give anything in exchange for it if it was in peril. This is what Jesus is saying. And this is brilliant. And this gives us clarity in our life for how to live. My soul is greater than my things. And when my soul suffers because of my things... And I stop following because of my things. Then I forfeit it. And this is incredible. Because the disciples are in that kind of flux. One foot in, one foot out. When it benefits me, when it doesn't, it's a little bit more challenging. And so Jesus is just leaning in. And it's no good to gain the whole world and lose my soul. Because I would be willing to trade it all back at the end anyways. So my soul is more valuable than everything in the world. Jesus is saying this, deny yourself now or lose yourself later. What's your point though, preacher? What's your point, Josh? What's your point, Jesus? Now for anyone that calls himself a Christian in the room, a follower of Jesus, this next statement Oh, as I was reading it this week, it hits pretty hard. But this is important for us to understand as followers of Jesus. For if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in my Father's glory. With the holy angels is the last word. In other words, there's a day of reckoning. And there's a time where we're wondering if he's coming back. And then again, he told them if they'd be arrested, he, and then he was, and then he told them that he'd be beaten, and he was, and he told them he'd be killed, and he was, and he told them of the resurrection. And so they're wondering, is he going to rise from the dead? And he does. And at some point in the journey, and if nobody's ever said this to you before, it's important that you understand that following Jesus will cost you, no matter where you live and what you're upbringing. And here's what's important to understand about the Jesus way and the Jesus life. That salvation is free. It costs us absolutely nothing. You don't have to earn God's love. You don't have to earn God's forgiveness. You just get to receive it by faith. You're saved. That's it. If you want to follow Jesus and you want forgiveness from Jesus and you want a relationship with your heavenly father, you can just ask and you receive it. But following Christ or following Jesus will eventually cost us something. There's a cost associated with following him.